Well, as markets continue their optimistic run and the economic numbers are watched for signs of green shoots or yellow weeds, what does one of the world's best-known bears make of where we are right now? It's five months since we talked to renowned economist Dr Mark Faber, editor of the Gloom, Boom and Doom report and author of Tomorrow's Gold. Back then he lived up to his nickname, Dr Doom, but since February, has he become any more optimistic? To find out, Mark Faber joins me in the studio. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. President Obama says the brakes have been put on America's economy. Abby Cohen is one commentator who says the U.S. is actually already out of recession. Just an hour ago, in fact, we got some better than expected uh, orders for manufactured goods. On the other side of the coin, a lot of people are saying we're in for a second wave, whether it comes from commercial property in the U.S. or banks in Europe. What do you think? Well, we have to distinguish between the stock market and the real economy. As you know, the real economy began a recession at, in late 2007, and then between September 2008 and March 2009, we fell off a cliff, and then we were at a very low level of economic activity. And then the huge stimulus packages kicked in, and the money printing kicked in, in other words, zero interest rates, and uh, quantitative easing by the Federal Reserve and also other central banks. And that then stabilized the global economy. And when you have car sales dropping 50% and more, then you can, of course, have a rebound. But the question is how sustainable the rebound will be, or is this rebound at the present time actually borrowed from the future? And the, my sense is that and here I'm talking about the economy, that the economy near term can recover and maybe the recovery will be uh, somewhat lengthier than expected, a crack up boom, because the first stimulus package in the US probably will be followed by a second one and money printing will lead to even more money printing next year, so it can last say 12 to 18 months. And then we will get another set of problems arising from each government action has unintended consequences. And so, so, so let, let me just interrupt yes. you there. So we're talking, I guess, if you like, two timelines. First yes. of all, you've got economy recovering because of massive government stimulus. Correct. Within that next 12 to 18 month period, do you see a risk of another sort of banking crisis, if you like, whether it's triggered for, by maybe commercial property in the US? Do, do you see that as a risk? Not uh, a pronounced risk for the simple reason that, you know, I don't hold a very high opinion of bankers, but you really have to be dumb, dumb, dumb not to make any money when the government gives you money free of charge. So the bankers, they get money free of charge. I wish every person in Australia who has an honest business would get money free of charge, and they will also make a lot of money. The bankers get money free of charge, so they can do things and they'll make money. And the worse the economic conditions will become, the worse the commercial property market will become, the more money the mo government in the U.S. will throw at the system and the more bailouts will follow. So, so, so I think you... actually the banks, you should buy bank stocks in the world. I, in the short term at least. Yes, yes so, for so the then... next, say, 12 months or so. And then the next question is how that stimulus is wound back and whether or not governments can do it. Is that what you see as triggering the next crisis? I don't think they'll wind it back voluntarily. I think one stimulus package will lead to the next one and to more money printing. And so in five to ten years' time, the real crisis will break out when the whole system collapses. That will be the end. Because the what problem... What do you mean by that? I mean, what do The you mean? system Armageddon. collapse occurs when... At the moment, we had the private sector failing, basically, and triggered partly by government policies and by Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, who were government-sponsored enterprises in the U.S. But the government was still in a position to bail out. But the next time around, the government will go bust, basically. And so before they go bust and default, in other words, don't pay the interest on their government debts, because you don't misunderstand it. As the fiscal deficit goes up, the interest payments on the government debt also go up. They are now around $400 billion annually. I would think that there will be around a trillion dollars in five to seven years' time. And that will then become burdensome on GDP. And so then the government goes bust, but before it does that, it will inflate its way out or try to inflate its way out. And that won't work. So the next step will be to go to war. 
Uh, the whole thing will collapse. I mean, to, to the extent that uh, they face an enormous issue, I mean, I think the estimate that came out yesterday of the American deficit over the next 10 years is over $9 trillion. Well, that's but optimistic. That's, it okay. will be more, but in you, my opinion. You have no faith in the administration's ability to wind back stimulus and to start dealing <laughs> with that problem? Are you joking? Having faith in the U.S. administration? I wonder... Who on earth would have faith in the U.S. administration? Well, certainly not someone who thinks. So therefore I take it that you are appalled that they've reappointed Ben Bernanke? Well, I think Ben Bernanke is like a ship captain. He has warning signs. He sails the ship. There's a storm coming. He disregards any warning signals. He disregards the storm signals. He sinks the ship. A thousand passengers drown. He saves the crew in his control tower, five officers and himself in a lifeboat. And they get a medal for bravery for saving five people. So you see That's th Wall Street, the five people. The rest of the country is basically bankrupt. So you see this reappointment as reward yeah, for an instance joke. bad behavior? Yeah, a total joke. Who could have done a better job? Well, the problem is... The Whoever would have been appointed would have been an uh, Obama puppet. And so there is no better choice. Mr. Volcker would actually be a good choice, but they isolated him. They took him as an advisor, but then they pushed him aside because he has sound policies. So, but a big problem. I can accept someone who comes to me and says, oh, Bernanke did a good job at, say, containing the crisis. Okay, that we can discuss. But who created the crisis, Mr. Greenspan and Mr. Bernanke, by letting credit growth uh, get out of hand? And that everybody could see. Last time we, we spoke five months ago, you said that uh, I should buy a farm and a gun because things are going to get <laughs> yes. very bad. And I assume that was because yes. I ought to be self-sufficient rather yes. than any more dire consequences. But uh, Now you need a machine gun. Is that, <laughs> so from what you're saying, though, we have around 12 to 18 months where you see there will be some opportunities for room in the equity market and room in the economy, and then we back yes, down the hatches yes. because it's bad for a long time. Well, I think I was lucky in the sense that I was interviewed in Canada on March 6th, the day the S&P bottomed out. I said, I would buy stocks because they were very oversold and because sentiment was very negative. Now we are somewhat overbought. We went from uh, 666 on the S&P to over 1,000, and the Australian market went from 3,120 to now 4,500, whatever, 54. And so the markets, they had a huge move. But I think following maybe a sideways correction or so, or even a more significant correction, the more significant the correction is, the more money they'll throw at the system. So stocks can go up. Actually, the worse the economic conditions are, the more stocks could go up. Because the greater the bubble? Yes. So but it will end badly. It will end badly. Is there but anything that you can tell me that could possibly derail your incredibly pessimistic scenario? Uh, no. But I have to say, in Asia, we have, and in emerging economies in general, we had a, a collapse in exports and in industrial production. But the domestic economy is relatively sound, and unlike what the conditions were before the Asian crisis in 97, we in Asia, we have large foreign exchange reserves. So in other words, the Asian countries are financially very strong. And by the way, also, also Australia, we have an inflated uh, property market in Australia. But as an economy, we... Australia becoming more integrated into the Asian bloc, I have a relatively high opinion of the uh, future prospects of Australia. I mean, higher than, say, of the US. Plus, Australians are hard-working people. Dr. Mark Faber, that's an excellent way to finish it, with a little bit of optimism. Thank you very much for joining it's us. It's my pleasure.